Welcome to another Organ Vespers. I, for one, have really enjoyed this year having something special at the beginning of every month. And this first Sabbath of March is no exception. We have an excellent program for you, and I would encourage you, please, would you share this link, whether you are watching on YouTube or indeed on Facebook, please share this with someone who would be blessed by this beautiful music as you are going to be blessed. We have with us an amazing guest, and in fact, all of our guests are great, but we are especially privileged this evening to have John share with us, who is not only uh, a professor of organ music at North Park University, just up the road from us, uh, but also uh, the organist and minister of music at the fourth Presbyterian Church of Chicago. John is a virtuoso on the organ. He is well known and well acclaimed uh, throughout the nation as an excellent musician. But not only that, and this is a point of pride for me as a Brit, he and, and the Fourth Presbyterian Church of Chicago have been featured on the BBC's weekly worship program called Songs of Praise. And friends, if you have never experienced Songs of Praise, may I encourage you, after the Vespers, not now, but after, maybe just type that in to your YouTube search engine and be blessed by the amazing variety and excellent music that you will find on that program. John has been a part of that. We're so glad that you would spend uh, your time to be a part of this event. Once again, welcome. Let us pray as we ask and invite God's presence into this moment. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for gathering us one more time at the beginning of March. We can sense the changes in the season and we recognize that things are progressing in our world and in the same way we recognize that you are at work in our hearts and through the seasons of our lives. Bless us this evening as we spend these last few moments of the Sabbath together in this way. May we be encouraged and inspired for the week ahead of us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this organ recital coming to you from the Fourth Presbyterian Church of Chicago. My name is John Shear. I'm the organist and director of music here, and it is my delight to be able to play for you this, this afternoon. We're going to begin with a trumpet tune by Michael McCabe.
That was the trumpet tune by Michael McCabe. Michael's a good friend of mine. He's from Omaha, Nebraska. Has a very interesting career. He's served 20 years in the American military. For a time, he was the organist at Grace Cathedral and is also an oblate and a Benedictine abbey. So I hope you enjoyed the trumpet tune by Michael McCabe. Nearby Omaha, Nebraska is Lincoln, Nebraska, and that's where our next piece was written. Myron Roberts composed prelude and trumpetings while he was organist at First Plymouth Congregational Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. He was also the organist and the professor of organ at the University of Nebraska in Lincoln. This piece is a very interesting piece. It begins with a very solemn opening in the prelude from the French horn stop on the organ. You'll hear some of the lovely reed sounds in the organ, the flute stop as well. After the short prelude, he launches into a very rhythmic section of the trumpetings, but you don't actually hear the trumpets at the beginning. He saves that to the very end of the piece. So this is the prelude and trumpetings by Myron Roberts.
the next piece is from the Baroque era. Johann Gottfried Walter lived almost the exact same time as Johann Sebastian Bach, his second cousin. Uh, Walter and Bach even worked together for a brief period at the Weimar Castle in the early 1700s. While there, Bach composed many of his organ works and Walter did as well. And like Bach, Walter admired Italian composers and borrowed ideas from many, many other composers. And so this next concerto, concerto in B minor, is a, a transcription of a piece by an Italian composer, but we actually don't know very much about that composer. But Walter admired his work and, and arranged it for the organ. And so this is the concerto in B minor by Walter.
Wow, what, what amazing music. Thank you so much, Dr. Sher, for sharing uh, that passion through music with us. And as we take a few moments this evening to reflect as we end this Sabbath and we start a new week, I would like to share with you something from the experience of God's people as recorded in the book of Joshua. I'm reading through the Bible again this year and I'm currently in Joshua. One of the things that is amazing about the stories that we find there is that these are the stories of conquest. These are the stories of God's people on the move, on the march as it were. And throughout the books of Moses, you know, Genesis, Revel uh, Exodus, Leviticus, all the way to Deuteronomy, while there has been some movement, there has been this great sort of awaiting promise that one day God's people will enter the promised land. And the book of Joshua is where this actually starts to take place. Now, if you haven't read the book of Joshua recently, or you do not remember uh, the stories contained in it, you will know that this conquest of the promised land is kind of a mixed bag. Uh, there are experiences of great success, great triumph, like uh, when they marched around Jericho and, and the walls came tumbling down. But that is then intermingled with moments of challenge and even of failure on the part of God's people. I'm thinking of, for example, the story of Achan who kept uh, some of the things that he should not have kept and it resulted in uh, God's people losing some of the battles that they should have won. But by the time you get to the end of the book, for the most part, God's people have been victorious. Uh, the, the promised land has, has been rid of the nations that were standing in the way of Israel inheriting the blessing that God had promised to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And now they are at the point where they are going to settle in the land. And right before, as it were, going into this moment of settling and relaxing, Joshua leaves them with one charge, one more sermon, one more encouragement to stay faithful. And Joshua tells the story of the journey. He tells the story of how God called Abraham and Isaac and the story of how they went into captivity and came out and God was with them and Moses. He recounts to them their history. And then he tells them, don't serve the gods of the other nations, the nations that you defeated, that God through you defeated. Don't serve their gods, but stay faithful to the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And then these very famous words that I'm sure we have all heard or read ourselves in Joshua chapter 24, verse 15, he says, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites, in the lands that you are living. But, he says, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Joshua lays out this choice before the people. God has brought you on this journey. You have experienced successes and you've experienced some challenges, but nevertheless, here you are in the promised land. But still the choice remains to you this day, who you will serve. Will you serve the Lord or will you serve the other gods? And Joshua says, as for me and my house, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. At the start of a new month, as we see things starting to open up in our nation and in our state, as by God's grace, uh, COVID is on the retreat. As we uh, end another week's cycle and begin again afresh tomorrow, there remains to us the same choice. God has been faithful to us as we look back in our past history, even our recent past history of the last week. 
We can see moments of great victory, of great triumph, when God has come through for us. We can also see moments when our lack of faithfulness, our lack of following God's instructions have created issues and challenges in our life. And on the cusp of this new week, on the cusp of this new month, Joshua presents to us the choice again. Who will you serve? Will you serve your old habits? Will you serve your old ways of thinking? Will you serve the gods of the people you replaced, the gods of, as it were, of this world, of this society, of this culture, the gods of, of money and entertainment and, and, and of just uh, living for the moment? Or will you serve the Lord, the one who has brought you all this way? The choice still remains. Choose you this day. Who will you serve? But as for me, and as for my house, we choose, we have chosen, and we will continue to choose to serve the Lord. May the same be true of you. May the same be true of North Shore as a church community. May the same be true of each of God's servants throughout the world until he comes. Amen. This next piece is the Elegy by Edward Berstow. Berstow was the organist at York Minster in Northern England from 1913 until his death in 1946. This Elegy was written in 1911. Elegy by Edward Berstow.
The next piece is by Florence Price, an African-American composer who I've come to admire and respect a great deal. Her music uh, is greatly influenced by jazz and other musical trends of her era. She came to Chicago actually in 1927, having been born in Little Rock, Arkansas. And so she picked up musical ideas from that time, including jazz, but also, as you'll hear in this piece, uh, the whole tone scale. So this is The Retrospection by Florence Price.
thank you very much for joining me for this organ recital. I hope that this program has brought just a moment of inspiration, nourishment, comfort, and healing. So thank you very much for being with me this afternoon. We're going to finish with the Carillon of Westminster by Louis Vierne.
what an amazing experience we've had together. There is no way fitting to end this than in prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you for this opportunity to reflect at the end of this week, at the beginning of this new month. There are so many things to be grateful for. There are so many things to thank you for. And yet there are challenges ahead that we do not know. But we are asking that you would be with us now in this new week, in this new month, as you have been with us in the past. Thank you so much for the gift you have given to us through Dr. Shearer. We just pray that you would bless him, uh, bless the Fourth Presbyterian Church of Chicago and North Park University. Thank you for giving us the choice and reminding us to choose you again. And we pray that as we do, we will experience your blessing and your presence this week and this month. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with us. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day. And we look forward to seeing you again next month at the beginning of April as we continue our Organ Vespers series. God bless you.